Tesla's CEO Elon Musk is in court today to defend his role in Tesla's $2.6 billion acquisition of Solar City some five years ago. Shareholders are suing, alleging that the deal amounted to a Solar City bailout that enriched Musk and his family more than it did Tesla. Yahoo Finance's Alexis Keenan here now with those details. Alexis, what do we know that uh, Elon Musk said today in court? Hi, Alexis. So, so far, he started on the stand today in Delaware. It's in Chancery Court, and this case is being heard by a judge. It will not be heard or decided by a jury. But so far, Bloomberg is reporting that Musk said that he doesn't want to be a CEO at all. He said, I tried hard not to be the CEO at Tesla, but I had to or it would die. That's a quote that Bloomberg has put out. He also said that he'd much prefer to spend his time on design and engineering, but that just hasn't been his fate. So this case is a, a group of pension funds. They were shareholders of Tesla, and they complained that Tesla's 2016 acquisition by merger of Solar City for $2.6 billion of what shouldn't have happened uh, in the way that it did, at least. That's that energy company, of course, that was founded by Musk and two of his cousins. Now, these plaintiffs say that Musk's influence over Tesla's shareholders and its board that approved this deal really amount to a breach of Elon Musk's fiduciary duty to these Tesla shareholders. That's even though they say Musk said he was recused from voting on this deal. Uh, now, Solar City has since been reorganized as Tesla Energy. And at the time of this deal, Musk was a minority shareholder in Tesla. He owned 22% at the time. And he argues that the remaining shareholders approved this deal, so he should be in the clear. Though the plaintiffs say that because Musk was chairman of both Solar City and of Tesla at the time, that his influence was just too great in sealing this deal. So the question that the vice chancellor, that's the judge in this case, that, that uh, that's going to have to be answered here is whether Musk controlled the deal. And under Delaware law, though, there's really no bright line rule for how that is decided. So this very much might establish some precedent here in this case, uh, really up in the air to which way this should go here. Alexis? So let's say shareholders win this case. What might damages look like in the end? So in the chancery court, damages are very broad ranging. So sometimes in these cases that are handled in the Delaware courts, sometimes the courts have found, yes, in fact, there was a breach of fiduciary duty that had to do with this improper level of control. And they have exerted no damages at all that just kind of let it slide. And it is what it is. On the other hand, there's wide discretion for these courts. So that can include uh, monetary damages all the way up to really the value value of what would be undoing that acquisition. So that would be on the really steep end of the risk for Elon Musk and Tesla here. All right, Alexis Keenan, and we know you'll be watching this one for us. Thanks so much.